Our first redemption from Mitzrayim is described in Sefer Shemos in very, very specific terms and in a manner which leaves little opportunity for human participation and little expectation of human participation. In fact, the opposite is true. HaKadosh Baruch Hu descends into the human theater for the first time in history and literally sweeps us and sweeps humanity off of their feet. This is his debut after 2,500 years of creation. And the stage is emptied for the Rabboni Shalom. Ki b'chi pazon yatsasa meretz Mitzrayim. It happened in an electric and immediate fashion. And matzah captures the sudden, rapid pace, which left no room for human timing, schedule, or participation. Yecheskel Perachaf provides a very, very different view of how Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim unfolded. In Yecheskel Perachaf, HaKadosh Baruch Hu offers a role for Am Yisrael. Well, they couldn't necessarily overthrow the tyranny of the Egyptians, but they could overthrow the self-imposed tyranny of paganism because they had sunk in into a pagan um, culture. And unfortunately, despite our attempts to glorify sometimes the past, they were of the Avodah The angels at the Red Sea rebelled against the original plan to allow safe passage for the Jews because Halalu of the Avodah of the Avodah Why should the Egyptians drown while the Jews pass? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects the Jewish people to trigger Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim by withdrawing even slightly from the accumulated pagan culture and the accumulated idol worship. Sabayomahu Nasasi Es Yadi. This is in Yecheskel Perachaf. And I said, hishlichu alti tamo. Just walk away even slightly to show and to demonstrate some human initiative, which hopefully would elicit a divine reciprocation. What was the response of the Jewish people? They rebelled. They refused to listen. They were obstinate. They were intransigent. And Hashem decided to end it. At least the way Yechezkel describes it, Hashem's original plan, as we would say as Havamina was, to destroy the Jewish people, to start again. Because if they're too feeble to at least participate even partially in their own salvation, they don't deserve to be redeemed. And very harrowing words. I wanted to pour my anger out on the Jews. That phrase may sound familiar to you. We recited the night of Pesach. That phrase was originally hurled at the Jews as a threat for their non-participation, for their apathy. On the night of Pesach, we redirect it towards the, the evil and iniquitous nations. So the question is begged in Yechezkel Perchaf, why were we redeemed if we didn't deserve it? We were intransigent, we were incorrigible, we were deaf to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's, even modest requests. Why were we redeemed? So the next passage provides the answer. Vaas laman shemi, levilti achel ene So much had been invested for hundreds of years in building the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in our world through Avram's commitment, through Yitzchak's dedication. This clan had now become a family, which had then morphed into a nation. And we now represented our Kaddish Baruch Hu in this world, and the movement was growing. Thank God we live at the tail end of the movement of monotheism. And to eliminate the Jewish people at that stage of history would have led to a regression of Hashem's presence in this world. And any regression of Hashem's presence is a chil Hashem. So Hashem did not tolerate, did not even consider the possibility of extinguishing and eliminating the Jewish people. And we, according to Yechezkel, Perachaf, we were redeemed in Mitzrayim not because we deserved it, but because we were part of a larger narrative, a divine saga to represent Hashem in this world, va'as leman shemi, as we say in Hallel, lalanu Hashem lalanu ki'im l'shem chaten kavod. Who can read Yechezkel Perachaf without thinking of 1948? Were we deserving of redemption? Did our behavior merit reish tzmi chazku l'asenu and the return to Israel? It's hard to know. It's hard to know why we were selected where previous generations were not. But one thing is clear. In the post-Holocaust, dark, nightmarish world, Hashem's presence was disappearing. And that presence had to be restored and replenished by some divine act, which we may not have deserved, but we were clearly the beneficiaries of. So when you read Va'as Laman Shemi in Yechezkel Perachaf, that the Jews in Mitzrayim were redeemed, not for our own deservedness, but for some larger process that we were part of, we had the privilege to live through that dynamic 70 years ago when we were returned to our land 
Laman Shemei. And who can, not, who can miss the burgeoning presence of Hashem over the last 70 years? If you ask yourselves, what was Hashem's presence in this world more palpable? In 1948 or 2018, the answer to that question is unmistakable.